Hello my soccer universe, the champions are back and while maybe this week's fixtures were not all that great, we had one really remarkable result, we had two favorites struggling quite a bit and we are stuck with the realization that yeah it's only Copenhagen but if there's one team that looks undeniable at the moment it's these guys, Manchester City uh, who probably should have won by more than they actually did but yeah uh it was great to have the champions league back to be honest and i'm really looking forward already to next week's fixtures which are a teeny bit more dicey i also have had to say but it's all due to the draw which uh we said last time was very 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 fair one but before we go into the um, uh, fixtures themselves i actually want to uh, tell you how the odds have changed prior to this round over the entire winter period because uh, prior to the draw uh, we were at a completely different stage and you see that for instance Bayern Munich definitely have dropped and they're one of the biggest losers in the rank ranking yes Real Madrid only slightly higher but still uh, Real Madrid have been a lot more convincing uh, we see Arsenal Inter PSG kind of hold, holding the spots uh, Dortmund and Atletico also swapping spots and PSV finally get the race that they should have gotten because uh, that is a really really astonishing team and on the other side you see Sociedad and Leipzig also going down overall when we just look at the raw percentages Inter held their place but Inter were the overall uh, best mover uh, and oh, they, are, they are amazing in Serie A so of course they will be rising up and then Dortmund with a good start to the season, Real Madrid and also Lazio, kind of surprising, being the top top moves on the bottom, Real Sociedad, yes they have uh, goal scoring trouble, Bayern, Atletico, Leipzig and of course Napoli, Napoli in big trouble. But that was before, now we'll talk about the first few legs and you see uh, Copenhagen taking on Man Manchester City. It's probably the one match where everyone knew that this is only gonna go one way and that's exactly what it have, what it did. Um, City scored three brilliant goals, created chances left and right and yes it helped that uh, Copenhagen has not played for quite a while, winter break I think the Danish league is starting this weekend so also doesn't help them and yes they might play some tournaments here, it doesn't help. De Bruyne uh, assisted by Foden starts the scoring in the 10th minute and you think this is gonna be ugly. However, uh, A they're not clinically enough, B uh, Grealish who was in the lineup gets sub subbed off so Doku, the new flavor of Pep uh, is calm, calm coming in. And then um, Edison is making a mistake in the builder play and so the ball falls to Mudson who in the 34th minute gets an equalizer out of literally nowhere. Uh, however, just before for that, <laughs> and I, I mean, I it's hard for me to watch Manchester City because it's so clinically, it's so clean, it's also perfect, so I don't have the excitement level there. But when you see the way that the goals are scored, it's so brilliant. De Bruyne is uh, setting up Bernardo Silva. De Bruyne is probably the one player that really, really gets excited just before the half. 2-1 City and then City actually were pressing to really make it a proper score and they could, could have cruised but the return leg is scheduled in a very iffy point of the, of the season. I think there's a Liverpool game that could be a title decided as well. So uh, better get it in and then play just uh, uh, the second um, uh, string in the return, return leg to get, 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 get home. I take them quite a while and again it's a brilliant move uh, in, sto in stoppage time that sees Foden score uh, but they've, they, they were pressing and Copenhagen were only holding on at that point. At the same time Real Madrid as we saw second favorites ahead of this match were under serious pressure at Leib Leipzig and already in the second minute Cesco had a header put into the net it was called off for offside and first I thought yeah this might make sense but then you see the replay Sheshko is not in offside po uh, position I think Rodrigo is putting him onside um, and yeah there's a player that is offside that is close to Lunin but he doesn't he doesn't obstruct Lunin in any way it's really hard to fathom why this goal was disallowed and it's changed it changed a little bit uh, the, the complexion of the game because Leipzig, if they, they have one problem is 
converting their chances and yes they kept on pressing on the Real Madrid really it it was quite a fear physically match Xaver Schlager bossing the midfield uh, he had a up and down uh, part of the uh, start, 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 start of the year but here he was really running the show uh, and they created chances uh, you know Sheshko, Xavi Simons and, 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 and so on Lunin saved the Real Madrid and then it needs one moment of brilliance by Brahim Diaz yes I know him well who just wiggles through a few defenders and then you think he may lay it off no he just curls it nicely it's a brilliant goal and uh, it turned the game completely on, on, on its head. Yes, Leipzig have then been pressing, but you could see that the belief waned and waned and waned and waned and waned. And in the end, probably could have even ended 2 0 for Real Madrid. Um, but uh, also, uh, Brahim Diaz had to come off with an injury, and he came already on for Bellingham, who is out with an injury. So maybe some trouble for uh, Real Madrid on the horizon, but overall. It was not brilliant, but Real Madrid get the win and they're the driver's seat and you would think that the Bernabeu uh, Le Le Leipzig will not have much chance to move on. Then we get to the big one, Lazio against Bayern. Bayern on the back of the loss to Leverkusen and you know, you always feel that if Bayern got beaten so so badly, you don't want to be the next uh, team playing them because they are going to show that they want to be better. But in this match, despite Bayern being better in the first half and having more chances, no shots on goal, by the way, but having quite, quite some chances, and one by Kane was really weird how he, he, he missed it, you could feel the confidence is missing. And Tuchel actually brought on got your Müller, your Goretzkas, and Andy Kimmich, show me, show me what you can, 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 can do. It didn't show much. Um, yes, as I said, the first half a little bit more uh, decisive, Lazio staying. Uncharacter is a little bit back, keeping it tight, but Bayern um, could run through Lazio and control Lazio quite nicely. By the way, I need to congratulate Lazio for the Tifo with that eagle. Olympia in the corner, that looked amazing. Also has, has to be said. Uh, but yeah, Bayern don't convert very chance, but in full control. And they thought they can continue this way, but Lazio then decided, okay, we have poked, we have let the giant come at us and now let let, let us burn with some count, count contacts. And it was so funny when you, I don't know if fun, fun is the right word, but if you see Bayern play in the sex, they can have uh, everything. It was a little bit more going forward. They didn't take the risks anymore. It was more sideways passes, you know, a little bit uh, tentative. Keep possession instead of going for goal and exactly in the build-up to what ended up to being the winning goal for La Lazio it's that uh, where um, I think it was what was great so he has uh, uh, now Sané he has um, a Guerrero on unless he can play the ball out Guerrero makes a run and make, make, makes a cross into the box and maybe Harry Hurricane is there what does he hit his side? He is thinking too much for a split second goes in the center and suddenly there is a transition uh, for Lazio who don't even play that transition very well. Louis, Louis, Louis but the, 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 uh, the pass is not good. How it falls to Jerry Mobile, who binds the two defenders, uh, goes through a little bit like Brahim Diaz against Le 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 Leipzig. And he also seemingly fumbled the chance, plays it out to Isaacson, who already had a pretty big chance early in the second half, where Neuer made a good save. And Upamecano runs around with a stupid and rash challenge gets a red card it's a penalty immobile conquer converts and he's the hero here hero of the game but i didn't create much i mean honestly it could have been to the lazio if it wasn't for um uh, manuel neuer because lazio had more shots on goal and lazio go with a lead to bayern munich i still think a bayern munich will move on but this is a uphill battle and if they don't beat lazio it's gonna be trouble for tuchel that's for sure and then it had almost a similar flavor, except that the roles were reversed. I mean, Real Sociedad, we loved them in, in the group stage, but uh, their form has been going down, whereas PSG have been stabilizing themselves. But PSG did not look good in the first half at all. Uh, this good performance that they had on the weekend without Mbappé, where uh, it was almost a team performance, where the players run for each other, as soon as Mbappé in there, it's not quite happening, unfortunately. 
and this is the bothersome thing uh, with Killian to be honest. Uh, however, whenever he had the ball, you also feel there's imminent danger uh, there. So, you know, the good comes with the bad, I would think. But Rasos that really uh, had the pressing machine on. They neutralized um, PSG as much as, as the good team had the best chance of the, of the game by hitting the crossbar in the first half. And then some adjustments made by PSG. It didn't get immediately better, but they get the corner kick uh, that Marquinhos then heads to as the back post, where Mbappé loses his uh, defender and from a short, short, short distance gets it in, into the net. That's what Killian does for you. Uh, it, did, it didn't look convincing, and I'm sure against a better team. And Real Sociedad are a really good team, but if they had quality players up front that can convert, this would have been a much bigger proposition for, for, for PSG. So Mbappé makes it 1-0, and then Barcola uh, gets sent by Fabian Ruiz. Has kind of two heavy touches, but he has the speed to make up for that, and then puts it through, through the legs of defender and goalie. And scores a 2-0 and PSG are in control of the tie. And as I said, uh, Real Sociedad, I mean, if they would have a goal scorer up front, would be a different story. But the way it happened in the second half, then it was pretty clear that PSG is going to win that one. And they go in with a lead into the return leg. So if you now look at the changes... It's not a so surprise. Lazio are the big winners of, of that one. Real Madrid and Manchester City get again the away wins, but also PSG have improved. So everyone who won, of course, improved their chances. Uh, worryingly enough for Bayern, uh, they have lost quite a bit, but they're not as bad as Copenhagen, who are basically all but eliminated. But that was about to happen anyway. Um, if you look at the overall chances now, uh, we see City and Real Madrid up there. But my model says, and that's based on ratings and, and so on, that... Lazio are now the slimmest of favorites. I don't quite see it because I think Bayern, three weeks is a long time. And this is what I hate about the current confirmation. It used to be two weeks and two weeks was, was, was a, long, a long time. If that game was played next week, it would be a whole different story. Three weeks is a long time for Bayern to figure things out. And maybe they just might and romp over Lazio. But at the moment, Bayern fall from third favorite to sixth favorite in my model. Uh, Dortmund actually overtook Barcelona as well, but that, that I think is just a simulation error there. That they and Lazio actually rise up because they got the boost. But you see Arsenal, Inter, also PSG profiting big time. But it's Manchester City and Real Madrid more or less through, and you see City even more through. So they are solid, solid, solid favorites in the Champions League. Next week, I think we have a couple of more interesting guys. Inter against Atletico seems to be really, I think for, for me, this, this, this is the matchup. Simeone coming back against his former team. An Inter team that is undeniable in Serie A at the moment. That has so many res resources, not only player-wise, but also the way they, they play. Very ad adaptable against an Atletico team that's a little bit reeling, but also has it in them. Yes, there's no Alvaro Morata in there. I think PSV Dortmund could be a real fun ma ma matchup. Uh, honest, honestly, I think this is not a safe one for Dortmund or PSV. Have been plateauing, I would say. And then uh, <laughs> the derby of misery, Napoli against Barcelona. I still think Barcelona favorites in that one. Because as bad as Barcelona have been, Napoli have been worse. And it pains me to say that. Can Porto do something against Arsenal? I think Arsenal are at the moment the overlooked team. I, I feel the way things are going. If there's one team that could eliminate Manchester City, it's Arsenal. Not sure they win it, but I think they can eliminate Manchester City. So that's what I wanted to say. Any case, let me know your thoughts on the Champions League. If you have enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!